find me afterwards, I'll tell you about it. Oh yeah, about the thing. Yeah, it's notable. <laughs> yeah, okay. Welcome to Whiskey Balls. <laughs> I'm Daniel. You're gonna go, when I tell you, you're gonna go, whoa. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're actually, yeah, okay. <laughs> What's the whiskey? <laughs> so we've got two bottles we're gonna do uh, uh, from Patron Saints, Jason and Eric Souter. Jason and Eric Souter! <laughs> You patron saint of holy crap, that was pretty good. Whiskey. <laughs> no, it's what all is good. It? Is it the glass that has that really high? Yeah. Wow, that's very high. That's okay. A good one. Motor City Gas. Okay, so okay, we, we they send us like eight bottles from Motor City Gas. Okay. Different? Yeah, every one of them different. I saw something that was very interesting to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're gonna A B compare some things. Okay. So the to start, I got a malted corn bourbon. So it should be like a standard bourbon, but the corn is malted. And then we're gonna try the bourbon finished in coffee bean barrels. That's what I saw. That's what I saw. Yeah, yeah. 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 That okay. So a lot of times in whiskey, you'll see something, it's like, wow, that sounds really interesting and cool, and then mm -hmm. you try it. And like, you have no idea what impact it had, right. about, if any. Let's hope this is not one of those. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we find it. Because okay. that sounds really interesting, man. The first thing we're trying is a bourbon. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the mash bill is, mm -hmm. but um, these guys it. are a farm distillery. Ooh. And everything that they write about yeah. is like everything they do is a one-off. So at one point you can go in their barrel house and try 50 different products. That's really... Like, so it's like, well, right. this is a one-off. Next thing's gonna be another experiment. Next thing's another experiment. All right, I already have very strong opinions about what, about what's happening here. Okay. Put your nose in that and we'll get, we'll get caught up. Oh, I like that. The density on the this nose. cherry, it's so dark thick. sugar. It's so beautifully rich, just on the nose, obviously. Bitters, aromatic bitters. Yes. Now, I smell this, and then I hear everything they ever do is one-off. And you're like, and I think, son of a bitch. I think, this is a distillery that's an amazing passion project. Mm -hmm. This is never going to freaking scale. But maybe they're not interested in that, yeah. which makes it that much cooler to where these guys are just doing small experimental runs and just seeing what it turns into. I hope uh, it lives up to the nose because this nose is actually really interesting. Mm -hmm. A little bit of wood varnish. Yeah. A little bit of actual, like, um, what's the main? My mind's going blank on the bitters company. Uh, something, brother. Fee. Fee. Yeah. Um, the classic. Aromatic bitters. Yeah. Like you put it in an old fashioned. This cocktail. is monkey wrench. Pretty point four percent. It's almost fifty percent. Uh this I'm expecting good things. Mm -hmm. And I'm already impressed, based on the nose alone, maybe my opinion changes after I taste it. I'm already impressed that I have this voluptuous of a nose mm -hmm. whenever they don't even specialize in a single type of spirit of mash bill because whenever you specialize in something yeah. you can really start to you know finesse it and dial it in and get it right other this, things we're gonna try yeah malts okay all kinds of yeah. stuff this smells really right mm -hmm. so let's taste it and see if it lives up I'm starting to get more of the grain in the nose now oh yeah. I like it oh that works for me it's yeah. it starts sweet and you think you're gonna get this overly sweet mm. And then right about the midpoint, mm. it sort of gets dry, mm. and it opens up into this slightly tannic but not bitter. Yeah. See, that tracked very differently for me. Mm. This was, on the front end, mm. kind of dry, and then halfway through, it shifted hard, and it gave me this really big, juicy, fruity sweetness mm. halfway through. So it was the flip, you spread it around? the inverse of what you got. When you took a sip, did you spread it around a little bit? I did it the right way. <laughs> Because I just just very little. Very I just little. spread it across my tongue and it changed. Mm. It reversed. Yeah. So my first sip, I just took a quick sip and I didn't do anything to it, and it was sweet, yeah. then dry and yeah, yeah. open. Second one, I spread it all over. It was dry and open and then sweet. Uh, so far, I really like this. So far, hell yeah. Okay. Damn. Do we want to jump? This is the kind of stuff. Every time we pour a distillery you've never heard of, yeah. that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. Something like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really good. Obviously, no well, faults. Well executed. Really great. Ooh. Okay, well that's exciting. Mm. Now I am way more interested in their other experiments. Mm. Cool. I, I don't. I was sort of like I wasn't sure about the diversity of products. I'm still living in like this cinnamon, oaky. Mm. You got the sweetness, but also you got like that barrel tannin kind of really butted up against each other. All right, this is a bourbon. Yeah. 
finished in mm -hmm. coffee bean barrels. We'll One see. barrel looks like. We'll see. Live life against the grain. Okay. This is called bump and grind. All right, I'm gonna tell you this right now. Huh? I put my nose in it. And maybe, maybe it's because I know what they put it in, but mm -hmm. I'll be damned if I don't get a bit of a coffee note. Oh, and the, there is it's a green. Oh, no, I'm not getting green. That coffee note is almost, it's, it's almost so nutty that it becomes a peanut butter kind of quality. So um, <clears throat> there's a note in high acidity craft coffee beans yeah. that tastes sour when you taste it. Okay. So you ever notice that like some coffee you drink like Starbucks or some of these other big brands or yeah. Keurigs, it's really dark, it's like and, dark and bitter. Yeah. And then you get like a craft one and there's a slightly sour note to the coffee. Mm -hmm. That's a often high acidity, mm -hmm. comes across as sour on your tongue. I'm smelling what I would interpret as a pea berry coffee. Okay. okay. Uh, this yeah. like, yeah. For me, this tracks is much more of a an under sugared peanut brittle nose mm -hmm. with that bourbon character. But I was hoping for some type of noticeable impact from whatever the coffee bean barrel did. It's something, but I don't know if yeah. it's coffee. It's Yeah, I don't think it presents as the smell of coffee. For me, it's presenting as a, like a peanut butter, peanut brittle type of. Flavor. I'm feeling a little bit of the greenness of this is, is sticking out to me a little bit too much. Yeah, I'm not getting the greenness at all, which I'm not a fan of the green note. Which is fine by no, me. it's a different green note though. It's, it's not the typical it's not asparagus, sappy. sappy okay. Not that. Yeah. But it's 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 like a really low roast coffee bean, oh. sour oh. pea berry, oh, not right. dark so roast. So the coffee scene. Okay, right. Cool. Yeah, I was in. Yes. I'm going in. I do like the way it tastes. Dude. Did you notice it has like a little bit of a pepper, like um, almost carbonation? Yeah, right the, about like, three, three fourths of the way. Yeah, a little bing. Yeah, it's like a like a Dr Pepper or something. So, like a little syrupy. I'm so pleased that this had the noticeable impact mm -hmm. because I think it's more often than not they'll say some really interesting thing that they did and you're trying to find it and you can't yeah, tell it's like the mescal difference. Mescal finished and you're yeah. like, well, I guess maybe. You or... can definitely tell the difference, but it's not again what we were getting on the nose. It's mm -hmm. not what you would expect from coffee. Yeah. For me, it's presenting as a peanut butter, under sugared peanut brittle, that kind of nutty character. Like That's see, on I the nose and on the taste. Don't like the nose. I do. Yeah. But I do like the taste. Yeah. Dude, man, if these are indicators of what they're doing over at the Motor City Gas, whatever, hell yeah. Yeah, they're doing interesting stuff. They're doing it well. I like it. Yeah, I'm going to go back to the bourbon malted corn. Mm hmm. Mm. And it's even darker and even sweeter now. It's getting even more like potpourri esque yeah. in honey and brown sugared. I really like the bourbon one. I lost my glasses. Forever? I always, I always get gas station glasses because mm, yeah. I will lose them. And these, they don't stick. Uh, like you take a drink and they're just loose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, Maybe your head should be bigger. You ever think about that? You're right. I will do that. <laughs> just grow your head. <laughs> 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 it's uh, like that commercial where they grow their beards. When they, uh, uh, poof. <laughs> what did we say the proof on We the, didn't. It's low 40s. Yeah, 42.6. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it does it, it is a little less lively on the alcohol. Yeah. Um, but this isn't way higher. This no. is more springy and effervescent with the alcohol. Note. I do like this one a lot better though. Well, I like uh, well, you know what? For me it's a toss up. If I want something off the beaten path, mm. that coffee bean barrel aged jam. Damn though. Okay. I'm look. All right. Can we mm, we know we're always talking about the hidden gem whiskeys. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. I think these guys, if this is any indicator of what they do by default, right. these guys absolutely deserve to be in the hidden gem whiskey list that we do a couple times a year. But with what? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what yeah. do we point well, to? Well, let's wait until we get their other four bottles that okay. they donated. And okay. all, they're all experiments. They did kind of a high bar. I'm, I'm at this moment in time, impressed. I'm excited Hold on. Hold on. about the malt. I have to hold my glasses. All right, so uh, Rex, the people want to know. Yes. Why did the editing change so dramatically? Lots all of, of a comments on editing change. Want to comment on Dan? Yeah. Yeah, Dan got a sweet new gig. And it came with a Tesla. <laughs> it's, not that, and, it's not that sweet. And a house so in we, downtown Austin. We've known for a while that Dan's going to be taking on a new gig, a new opportunity, which is great. Um, 
So, <laughs> people talking about the speed of the editing. Like, <laughs> yeah. I was doing the editing for the past two episodes. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm editing the and way... And by the time they see this, right. it's going to be like three weeks later. Right, right. Yeah. I edit the way that I edit. Yeah. And if there's something, what I think is boring, I shoot it in the head. So, yeah. I, I edit these first two episodes, and uh, I uploaded them, and then I look at the run times, like, holy sh**. That's only like three and a half minutes. No, so, it was like six. Oh, yeah. It's like six. But yeah, I, I did watch one where it was where I was standing there, and I was like, "Yeah, this is really good." And I think, and then I paused, and then you're like, "So let's get into the nose." And it wasn't even like a, no, it was boring. It was obviously a cut. That no, was boring. Apparently. And I wasn't even on screen while I was still talking. <laughs> no, that was you, son of a bitch. I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh no, you I don't know. You looked what's like you could give so little fucks. <laughs> I did kicking. you the favor. No, no, no I did you the favor <laughs> of you're funny. talking and <laughs> this facial expressions like he doesn't care at all. He doesn't want to be here. He is living a waking nightmare at this moment. That's funny. So he can't see your face. I'll take it off of you. We'll still hear your voice and we'll put it on me. That's funny. As you're talking. Yeah. So apparently I need to be less uh, discriminating. I guess. I have been told uh, that I have like, I'm mean, resting bitch face is maybe not the right thing. Right. But I do have like, as soon as I'm starting to talk about something where I'm, I'm thinking, yeah. I stop paying any attention to how I'm coming across my facial expressions. Yeah. No, it, it looks like you don't want to be here at all. I, I can't help that. I don't know what to do about that. <laughs> no, Because I am interested in what I'm, I'm thinking. I'm no, like, I think I'm adding to the conversation. In what, you're interested in what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. I'm very interested in what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's basically, it. it's, it's such an easy edit. Uh, I'll be <laughs> less aggressive with the coats, yeah. with the cuts. But basically, it's how we edit everything else. Yeah, yeah. Um, if we do like a 15-minute um, tribe well, episode, we're shooting for 90 minutes. Yeah, and if you go back to other vaults, yeah. there's a lot of era where Rex is doing all the editing. It's much more fast-paced. <clears throat> yeah, like you know, and Dan added a lot of flavor and personality, right? Mm -hmm. Like the funk and you know, a lot of fun moments. Um, but and uh, Alex says this too. Whenever they hand me something, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, let's take out 20% of this. Let's yeah. really make it tight. And it's stuff that apparently people want to see. I don't know, guys. Like, I would want stuff that's just the most focused, the most kind of yeah, on point. But they like most hanging energy. out with us. Six minutes isn't bad. <laughs> and so, a lot of them like the fact that it just sort of like runs and they All feel right. like they're a part of a random right. conversation I'll make, I'll make a bar. You a deal. I'll make you a deal. I won't cut as aggressively. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. You, you need to look like you want to be here. <laughs> I'll just wear a, like one of those like face masks on, with those rubber bands. All right. That's like me going like, yeah. and then I'll talk. But the, the thing where I kept having to stop and figure out how to arrange things, it's like, God, Daniel's face. <laughs> how do I? All right, cut to the bottle. Just focus on the bottle. <laughs> That's a big yawn. Wow, just hold the bottle. Hold yeah. the bottle. Hold the bottle. Larry Chris, I have become a caregiver to my 95, wow, new year right. old mother. And in going through her house, I found a bottle of Canadian Lord Calvert that yep. is about one third full. <laughs> it was probably sitting on the shelf, partially drank, uh, drinking, partially Consumed, yeah. drank uh, for 30 years. Is it still drinkable? Sure. Ah, I, yeah, throw it Yeah. Give it a try. It's going to taste, you'll know, it'll taste plasticky. Uh, yeah, if it was getting blasted by sunlight, it'll be weird. Yeah. Um, and if the cork hit any after that much time. Yeah, well, any. Calvert, if I remember correctly, doesn't have a cork. <laughs> like, oh, is it screw top? I think it's a budget oh, Canadian, yeah, yeah, if yeah. I remember correctly. Yeah, you should be fine. Yeah. yeah. Lord Calvert whiskey. Right. And then well, later, that's it. we see in the obituaries, a one Larry Christ has since passed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Delete remember the like, episode. Oh, God. <laughs> Delete the episode where we told him to kill himself. <laughs> yeah, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> All right. I don't know, man. I think this had pretty good energy. Maybe I won't be quite as brutal on these cuts. Fucking hell. Uh, Act like you want to be here, you son of a bitch. Here's the fighting, <laughs> stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, I'll fight for a friend. Steal, may you steal your life. And if you drink, may you drink with us.